Anastasia, and this is the first episode of Worth It or Not. In this series, I'll explore places around New York City and beyond, helping you decide whether these destinations are worth visiting. Today, we are at MoMA PS1. MoMA PS1 is a contemporary art museum located in Long Island City. To get here, you can take the E, M, and 7 from Manhattan, or the G from Queens or Brooklyn. How much is it to get in? It's a $10 suggested fee. It's great to support nonprofit art institutions, so pay what you can. Some exhibits don't allow videography, so I'll show you pictures instead. I love art installations. Unlike other contemporary art forms, I find them to be both interactive and immersive. Feels like I'm in a giant jellyfish, and that's not a bad thing. It's very calming. Oh my god, this feels so good. The rest of the museum sits inside this building, which was built in 1893 and used to be a public school. The first thing you see walking through the door is this exhibit. I didn't get it. I was starting to be worried that the whole entire museum would be filled with pieces like this, things that I just would never understand. Take, for example, this video art of broom sweeping water on a floor. I see. But then on that same floor, they had this really cool brick room meticulously lined with chalk called Education by Stone and was created by the same artist as the broom video. Listen. You enter through the basement level, but it can also be viewed from the first floor. The chalk calls attention to the work behind such brick layering. These video series captured scenes from neo-Nazi protests in Slovakia. I was watching this just a week after everything in Charlottesville happened. So these videos felt extremely relevant. Oof, deep stuff. Let's keep going. Heading up to the second floor, you encounter a delightfully whimsical pornographic mural. Is it just me or is this really sexual? I just see boobs and butts and everywhere. Like that is a butt and that is a butt. Found a boob, guys, right there. The second floor featured incredible architectural paintings by artist Sui Jie. I adored how the tropical colors contrasted with the geometry and metallic textures of these Shanghainese buildings. For the following exhibition, it was necessary to read the description as it was quite bizarre. So here we have a hammock with fleshy gourds, a toilet seat with a skin-like ring, a video of a person fingering a beige iPod case mold, and finally my favorite, the penis croissant. All these pieces made me feel really unsettled, but like in a really delicious way. Is this what contemporary art is about? I also enjoyed these paintings. The juxtaposition of the dark primary colors with the fun poses was intriguing. In this modern age of technology, of course there had to be a virtual reality installation. 
The blackened room is paneled with colorful geometric shapes. At the center, a VR headset. Put it on and this is what you see. The visuals were striking, but the overall experience was kinda meh. It was 30 minutes before closing, so I fit in one last exhibition. You enter what feels like a large room dimly lit with giant projections of graphics in the style of a video game. But the characters are walking around aimlessly and doing nothing. The ambiance was cool, but I wasn't sure what the point was. Once again, I had to read the description. Despite there being a greater intellectual point to this art, it was ultimately an open-ended animation without any fixed outcome or narrative. Sometimes I like that about art, and sometimes I hate it. And that was Momo PS1. Overall, between a thumbs up and a thumbs down, I would give it a... here. What I liked about the museum was that it was so interesting different and novel and I didn't know what to expect with each room that I went into. One minute I was seeing this serious political TV art and the next second I'm looking at a penis croissant. Like, that was crazy. I loved it. What I didn't like about it was that I found some of the paintings and installations to be esoteric. I didn't know sometimes what I was supposed to feel or think and so I had, would have to read the descriptions. So, you know, if you are the kind of person who loves art, who loves kooky shit, this is the place for you. But if you are someone who prefers maybe something more easily digestible, then maybe this isn't the right place for you. I also wouldn't recommend this museum if this was your first time coming to New York. You should probably go to the Met first or the original MoMA because they have more established collections. One of the reasons why MoMA PS1 just has the kookiest art is because it has constantly rotating exhibits of experimental art. This would be perfect if you live in New York or visit often, and because it's constantly changing, you can always come back, which is an amazing business model. Let's talk about logistics for a second. Location-wise, I love that it was really close to all of the subways, but this could be problematic if you don't have a lot of time to visit New York because it is not centrally located and there isn't that much around the area when you're done with the museum. Cost-wise, I think the admissions fee is cheap for New York. You could be broke AF, and only pay a dollar to get some amazing art. But on the other hand, since MoMA PS1 is a nonprofit art institution, you could pay as much as you can to support your art society. So that has been my MoMA PS1 experience. This is the first Worth It or Not video and I've had so much fun making it and I cannot wait to make more. Comment below where you would like me to review next. Okay, so I will see you in the next video. Bye!